Calculus Calculus is the mathematical study of change. It includes differential calculus and integral calculus. The development of calculus is often attributed to two men, Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz, who independently developed its foundations. However, calculus, like any mathematical or scientific discipline, is the combination of many mathematicians' work over the course of thousands of years. So where does the word calculus come from? It sounds a lot like calculate, or calculation, but its true origin comes from the Latin word calculus, meaning little pebble. Calculi were small stones that were used to keep track of livestock and grain reserves. Calculus courses typically begin with differentiation and then move on to integration, which makes sense since differential calculus is simpler than integral calculus. However, the historical development of this field was the other way around, with integration coming first. The first calculus questions were those surrounding area, volume, and arc length. The ancient Greek mathematician Archimedes laid the foundation for integration theory. To find plane area, he used the method of exhaustion, where he would use inscribed and circumscribed polygons with an increasing number of edges to find areas of curved shapes, such as circles. Archimedes was even able to approximate the value of pi by using exhaustion with triangles in a circle. He also extended this method to finding areas bounded between two curves, such as the area between a line and a parabola. Let's look at the example of the circle. If we start by inscribing a triangle inside the circle, we get a fairly inaccurate under approximation of the area of the circle. By adding more triangles in the shaded leftover areas, we create a hexagon, which provides a slightly more accurate approximation for the area. If we add even more triangles, we can see that that leftover shaded area is continually getting smaller. The area of the circle is approximately equal to the area of the inscribed polygon as the number of sides increases, and the area of the circle is equal to the area of, po of the polygon with an infinite number of sides. And in an example of area between curves that was mentioned earlier, we can see that as more triangles are added, the area of the polygon approaches the actual area between the curve. Archimedes' method of exhaustion also laid the foundation for geometric series. Speaking of series, you may recognize these as power series expansions, which are polynomial approximations of functions that don't normally contain polynomials such as sine, cosine, arctangent, e to the x, etc. However, these first three express expressions are actually Madhava series. Madhava was an Indian mathematician and astronomer who lived during the 14th and 15th centuries, years and years before Newton and Leibniz would find the same approximations. So, if Madhava created the power series, why aren't they named after him? And the answer is because no one can find his work. None of his surviving works contain anything pertaining to, to the power series. However, Later writings by members of the Mathematics Academy Madhava founded provide unambiguous proof that Madhava derived the power series. Flash forward a couple of centuries and we arrive in Europe in the 17th century during which Sir Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz made the developments that contribute to what is now modern calculus. First and foremost, Newton was a physicist focused on practical applications of math. Many of his advancements in mathematics were made out of necessity in order to do calculations for his physical discoveries, such as explaining planetary motion. On the other hand, Leibniz made many of the same observations Newton did, but made them in regards to graphical analysis. In fact, Leibniz created the notation that we today use for calculus, such as d dx, dy dx, and integral notation. Over the years, several European mathematicians would come up with nomenclature, theorems, and proofs that are essential to modern calculus. For example, Michel Roll from France came up with Roll's theorem, which states that a function f continuous on the closed interval a to b and differential on the open interval from a to b 
such that f of a is equal to f of b, then f prime of x is equal to zero for some value of x between a to b. This theorem was the precursor to the mean value theorem. Additionally, the mathematician Bernoulli introduced the term integral in 1690. European mathematicians made many contributions to calculus during the 17th, 18th, and later centuries, but many advancements in calculus had already been made in decades and centuries prior, such as finding tangents using the difference quotient or deriving complicated integration rules, such as the integral of secant of x. So what was missing during this time? And that is the fundamental theorem of calculus. No one had yet drawn the conclusion that integration and differentiation are inverse processes. This theorem is essential to calculus, and this finding of Newton is what makes his con contribution to the field so significant. However, it is important to remember that Newton and Leibniz were centuries behind some mathematicians' work. What makes their contributions so impactful is that they tie together previous mathematical findings with their own discoveries. Calculus is a vast field of study with roots from all over the world from thousands of years ago and continues to drive scientific and mathematical fields today.